Hello everyone, my name is Dakoba and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today we're going to be taking a look at a reinforced iron plate factory, which is an essential factory to build fairly early in the game as soon as you get into tier 2. Now in order to build this reinforced iron plate factory, we're actually going to have to unlock our first tier 2 milestone in part assembly, which will give us a number of components which we'll look at, at uh, in more detail at a later time. But what we care about right now is the assembler, so let's go ahead, select that milestone and send it away. All right, now reinforced iron plates are a critical component for us. They're gonna be used for our space elevator parts. They're gonna be used for our Mark II belt materials, and we're gonna need a ton for constructors and assemblers all throughout the game. So we'll probably wanna ramp up production at some point. But for now, we're gonna start with five per minute, which will give us a really good starting point. And it happens to be what is produced by a single assembler running at 100% efficiency. So that is our goal. Now, in order to produce five reinforced iron plates per minute, we're gonna need a total of 30 iron plates per minute. If we look at the recipe for that, we can see that that's going to take a total of 45 iron ingots per minute, uh, which is no problem. One of our miners is pulling 120 iron ore out of the ground, uh, but with our belts, we're limited to 60, so we, we're still okay supplying the, the 45. Uh, and those will get, then go into constructors to craft the iron plates. One constructor can produce 20 iron plates per minute. Since we need 30, we'll need two constructors, one of them at 50% or probably both of them at 75. With screws, it's much the same story. One iron ingot will turn into four screws. We'd need a total of 60 screws. Therefore, we need 15 iron ingots. This is nice because this means we're going to need a nice round 60 iron ingots per minute in order to create five reinforced iron plates per minute. So that is perfect. That is exactly how much we can provide. And that is exactly how much we want. Now we're going to be using the uh, cast screw alternate recipe to simplify the production chains a bit, but we're still going to need two constructors. One of them will produce 50 per minute and we need a total of 60. So we'll probably just run two each producing 30. So in order to produce this, we're gonna need a total of one miner, two smelters, four constructors, and one assembler. Let's get into it. Right. we can see our reinforced iron plates traveling down the conveyor and into storage so we know that our factory is working as intended let's go through how it's set up we start off by mining 120 iron ore per minute now we're currently limited by our mark one belt so we can actually only draw 60 ore per minute out of this but we've gone ahead and set up enough smelters that will be able to handle the full 120 once we upgrade our belts here very shortly the reinforced iron plates are actually an important part of this because they are the Mark II belt material. You can also see that we've left room for some additional smelters. 
it's reasonable that we may want to overclock our miner or replace it with a Mark II miner at a later time, and this allows us to expand our smelting capacity without having to redesign the factory. So this will allow us to expand this later on in the game if we want to double production of these plates or, or use that iron for something else. Now the iron is then shipped out across the platform and across the factory itself. This is actually an aesthetic choice. I like the way conveyors look when they travel overhead and you're walking underneath them. You can see the items moving across them. It brings a life to the factory. And so I, I like to implement things like that to make my factories feel uh, a little more active, a little more alive. And, but it's entirely an aesthetic choice. Over on the manufacturing side of our factory, we start off by sending the iron into two iron plate constructors. These are just turning them into iron plates, but they're not very efficient right now. You'll see one of them flicker on and off, and that's simply because we don't have the ability to change the clock speed on that. That's something we'll be working on here in just a few minutes. Right now, uh, they, they don't produce very efficiently, and we want to uh, lower the clock speed of both machines to correct that and reduce our overall power draw. We're doing the same thing with our screw constructor. You'll see both machines actually flickering on and off because they don't operate at the correct speed. Our screws and iron plates are then sent around into our assembler for final construction into the reinforced iron plates. Now you'll notice I've left a large area to the left. This is again something that we're doing to plan ahead for our factory. We may want to expand this at some point. You know what? I think we may actually use that space for our next factory producing rotors, which are uh, a sort of a companion item to reinforced iron plates. They're unlocked at the same time. And it's also something that we're gonna need to advance into the next set of tiers. So we may put that factory in that location. All right. Now to fix the clock speed issue on our constructors, we're gonna need to do a little bit more research in the man. This is gonna be located in the power slug research tree and it's gonna require a total of two power slugs, two blue power slugs for you to use. You'll need one of those to unlock the slug power slug research tree in the first place and then another one which you'll craft into a power shard in order to unlock overclock production. Now, overclocked production allows us to overclock our machines if we have more power slugs and therefore more power shards. But it also gives us the ability to underclock our machines, and that's what we're going to be doing here today. Now, remember that we need a total of 45 iron plates per minute. Each of these produces 30 iron plates per minute, so we're going to have to scale those down. What we're going to do is we're going to change each of these to produce 15 iron plates per minute. Now you can change this by either altering the target production rate or by changing the clock speed directly. And one of the things I want you to note is the power draw when we change this. When we swap this from 100% uh, uh, clock speed to 75% clock speed, take a look at that power draw. We're starting at four megawatts, and with that clock speed reduced to 75, it drops to 2.5 megawatts. You'll notice this is more than a 25% decrease, and this is something that is unique to Satisfactory. Underclocking actually saves you more power than the clock speed you change, which means you can build a more efficient factory that uses less power and less fuel by adding more machines at lower speeds. We're gonna do the same with our screw constructors, changing each of these to give us 30 screws per minute, giving us the 60 we need total for our reinforced iron plates. Now we could change the uh, clock speed on our smelters to also be more efficient, but I think we're just a few minutes away from unlocking the Mark II belts and being able to actually make full use of those smelters. So we're gonna leave that as is for now. And with our reinforced iron plate factory now running at 100% efficiency and building up a nice stockpile of reinforced iron plates in our storage container, I think that's where we're gonna leave it for today. I hope you've enjoyed this factory build and I hope you found it useful as well. Leave a like if you have and subscribe if you'd like to see more. As always, my name is Dakoba and I hope you have an efficient day. I'll see you soon.